Hey, welcome back everybody. This video, we are going to be exploring the return keyword in the context of methods. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free link in the description. In our class here, you can see we have this method and it is void. Void means there is no return type, meaning the, the caller doesn't expect to get any information back. So to look at the bigger picture from the caller in our program.cs, we pass in a five. Consider that the input, it's the argument passed in. The return allows us to give an output. In this situation, we're not giving an output because it's void. And the reason it's void is because everything that needs to be done is being done here. We're not needing to give any information back. But what if we wanted to modify this method? So rather than outputting all this information to the console, we just created a message that we would then return back to the caller and they can use it however they want. So why would we want to do that? Well, in this situation, we're being very specific about what this method can do. It can only write to the console, but that's very limiting. We could write this much more generally and allow the caller to decide how to use that information. They could put it to the console. They could put it to a log file. They could interact with it somehow in their application. That's totally up to the caller. And we basically want to try to create our methods to work with as many scenarios as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable. It's going to be a string and it's going to be called message. And we'll just start this with an empty string like so. And now we can modify this message. And at the end, we're just going to say return message. So that is how we give an output. Now, when we do this, you can see we get an error because we say it returns void but this is of type string. So we need to change this void to string. Now, instead of this code here, we actually need code to build out a message and we're no longer going to be able to use console. We're not going to write to the console at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to get rid of that and I'm just going to say message plus equals, which is how we can append to the value right here, which is currently empty. And I'll just say first name, plus a space, plus last name. And then you can decide whatever you wanna do. This is a very kind of silly example because we're really just working with a name, but be creative here. So for example, we could put a, a new line if we wanted, which would bring it all down to the next line. So we'll show you guys that here. This is our final method for now. And <laughs> It's totally contradictory. You can't have a final method for now. All right, so this is our, our temporary final method for now. Okay, so now let's go back to program.cs and invoke it. So we say me.output5, and the only thing is we need to assign this or use it in some way. So we can assign it to a string message. We called it the same thing, but it doesn't have to be named the same thing. Just to show you guys that, we could say message like that and then we can just output message. Let's run this, see what we get. And you can see we get my name five times, as well as an extra new line at the end, which comes from the last iteration putting uh, this right here. If you don't want it to jump to the next line like that, all you gotta do is say console.write. That way you don't have to do any crazy casing inside of the method. Run this, and there you go. So because this returns a string, anywhere a string is expected, we can use this instead. So for example, we could just cut that and paste it here directly, getting rid of this line altogether, and it should work exactly the same. And there you go. So thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we're gonna take a break from coding to get another concept known as encapsulation, which is a key part of object-oriented programming, and you don't wanna miss it. So go check that out. I'll see you in the next video.